Today we are going to discuss rolling motion. Now for this let us look at a high cycle. High cycle are those old fashioned cycles where you had one big wheel and the other was a small wheel. Now the radius of the front wheel is 2R and that of the back wheel is R. Now our challenge today is do both the wheels move forward with the same velocity and do they rotate with the same angular speed omega. Just pause a while and think over the question. We will be assuming all throughout our discussion that the wheels are rolling smoothly, that they are not sliding along this surface. Now to be able to compare the motion of the front wheel and the back wheel, let us get down to the basics of rolling. So we will just take a single wheel now. First of all, do you agree that when an object is rolling, its motion is a combination of translation which means it is moving in a straight line and rotatory which means the wheel is rotating about the center. Now this point which I marked over here is the center of mass of the wheel. What is the center of mass? The center of mass is a point where you can consider the entire mass to be concentrated. Now like suppose this wheel weighs say 100 grams. I am just taking an arbitrary value. So I could consider the 100 grams placed at this one single point and all the forces which are acting on the wheel to be acting at this one single point. But if you have a symmetrical object, it becomes simple in the sense if a wheel, in case of a wheel, you can just take the center of the wheel as its center of mass. Talking of the translatory motion first, now let us see when this wheel rolls, we could say that the center of mass O of the wheels, this moves forward with a constant speed. And let us denote this by the velocity of the center of mass. Now, what about the other points on the wheel? Do they also move forward with the same speed? Now, let us see, after a certain time interval, the new position of the wheel is somewhere over here. The point O over here has moved to this point. It has moved through this distance point over here has moved through this distance, the point over here has moved through this distance. Now all of them have moved through the same distance, let us say S, in the same time interval T. So the velocity of all these points, whether it is O or let us say I call this O1 and this is O2, all the particles have the same velocity. Now if I denote the velocity of the particle over here by a vector, let us say I choose this and I show this by a vector over here which is Vcm. I denote this as Vcm. Then I can also denote the velocity of this particle as Vcm and the velocity of this particle also as Vcm. See, this is correct because Vcm is the velocity of the center of mass. Now, these vectors have the same magnitude as this vector because the velocity is the same. And they also have the same direction. Okay, now we are looking at the rotational component of rolling motion. Let us take a point P on the wheel. See, when we are looking at rotational part, then we are talking of pure rotation. Okay, now suppose you want to find the speed of a point P which is on the wheel. And let us move the point and measure the distance along the road as the point moves. So what I am going to do is I am going to take the point P over here. So now as the wheel moves forward, say P starts from this point and as the, move, as the wheel moves forward, point P is going to move along the wheel. And finally, it is back over here at P, which means it has gone around the full circle. It has traveled along the full circumference of the circle and come back over here. Now when this happens, how far has the wheel moved? Now you can see that when the point P moves along the full circle, which means the wheel completes one full rotation, the distance that it moves forward is equal to the circumference of the circle. So the distance from O to say O dash over here, this distance will be 2 pi r, where r is the radius of this wheel. This is r. If you find this a little difficult to visualize, what you can do is 
cut two strips of paper right now you fold one of them into a circle which means you join this over here you bring this back over here you join it and let's say that now there's a small difference in the length between this paper and this paper so maybe you can cut off a little bit over here so that you have these two of the same length now what you do is you have a black circle now you place the black circle over here at this point and you roll the black circle so that until the point over here from which you start comes back at the end of its rotation so it's back over here okay now let's say the wheel goes around once in time t so we have omega is equal to 2 pi upon t that is the angular speed because the wheel is going around it's taking a full circle in time t so the wheel also moves forward through a distance of 2 pi r during that same time t which means i can write the velocity of the center of mass is 2 pi r over t that's okay we have an important relation now in case of smooth rolling that there is no slipping there is no sliding at this point in case of smooth rolling when there is no slipping we can say that v cm velocity of the center of mass is equal to omega times r you can see this from this from the above two equations that i have written now we are looking at rolling as a combination of translation and rotation and that's when we get the final rolling motion so let's just look at them one by one first let's take a look at the vectors for translation we've already discussed this and this is pure rotation and then finally we have rolling over here now for translation you know we can draw the velocity vectors as vcm so this is vcm this is vcm and this is also vcm equal to the velocity of the center of mass now let's look at rotation say so this is the wheel and it is rotating in this direction because the wheel is moving forward in this direction now at this point over here you know it has an angular velocity of omega now v is equal to omega r is something that you already know if r is the radius of this wheel in this particular case this value of v is v cm so v cm is omega r now we prove this relation if you are not sure of this relation just go back pause the video go back and check that you are sure of this at every point now instead of the angular velocity we want to mark the linear speed the linear speed when the body rotates now the linear speed you know is tangential to the circle which means it is perpendicular to the radius so you have a linear speed of vcm at this point don't be confused this is a linear speed due to rotation and not due to translation that was separate and you have a linear speed of vcm in the opposite direction because the wheel is rotating so you have vcm in this direction and as a vector you would call it as put a negative sign there combining the two and looking at the final vectors you have two vcm over here this and this are in the same direction this, this is two vcm but the velocity over here is zero because these two add up and give you zero in the next lesson i have explained how can rolling be taken as pure rotation with an axis to the point where the wheel makes contact with the surface on which it moves okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to combine the velocity vectors at a few more points say i take a point over here now you can see that the velocity vector is in the forward direction and the direction of the rotational vector I have to take a tangent to the circle. So the resultant of these two vectors, this vector over here, this particular vector is the direction of the velocity vector at this point. Similarly I could take say a point here combining these two vectors velocity vector. So at each of these points you can find the resultant which is the final direction of the velocity vectors when the body is rolling.